Thank you very much, uh, dear chairman. Good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. Sorry for speaking English, but I don't know no, I'm in too many Russian words, and so many apologize for this. Uh, it's a great pleasure indeed, and thanks a lot to the scientific committee for the opportunity to share with you some consideration regarding the optimal treatment uh, of early stage nosmo cell lung cancer. Of course, uh, I guess that there will be not too many thoracic surgeons in the room, uh, but uh, regardless of these, uh, I guess that every one of us uh, can agree on this uh, statement. So in early stage in nose muscle and lung cancer, certainly surgery, anatomical recession represent the standard of treatment. But of course, uh, we have uh, many patients affected with early stage in nose muscle and lung cancer, not amenable with surgery for functional or medical reasons. And so in this patient, traditionally, external radiotherapy with conventionally fractionated schedule represented the alternative treatment. But of course, the clinical outcome was completely different from the figures you can get with the surgery, as you can see in this slide. In the last decades, we got many important technological developments regarding radiotherapy. And with many of them approaching the issue of uh, lung cancer, you can, uh, of course, agree that stereotactic body radiotherapy represents an important new technique uh, with which you can treat early stage normal cell lung cancer. ASBRT is defined in such a way, a degree, high degree of accuracy to an extracranial target using high doses of irradiation with a few fraction, normally one to eight and using all cutting edge technology, both in simulation phase for DCT, in planning phases with sophisticated treatment plans like IMRT possibilities, and in the same time also in treatment delivery phase using new tools like the image guided radiotherapy world. So you can also call this technique SEBOR, that means uh, stereotactic ablative radiotherapy, just to underline the possibility that you can get a real radiological ablation of your tumoral deposit. ASBRT or SEBOR, whatever you want, uh, is not a magic machine. It's simply a radiotherapy technique. You can, of course, use different techniques, different machine, but this is really a highly sophisticated technique. We started from some from this situation using external fiducial markers with specific body frames and more recently with the world of image guided radiotherapy we are in the condition to deliver such a technique in the context of a frameless approach using the tumor itself like a fiducial of itself asbrt certainly represents a highly palatable technique in terms of uh, safety, non-invasive for sure, compared to surgical procedure. You can deliver it uh, in an outpatient basis. And of course, it's certainly very convenient in terms of a uh, patient's compliance. With all these things in mind, I have to remind you that in the last decade, many prospective clinical trials were conducted in such a scenario. I mean early stage nosmos and lung cancer with patient uh, with a tumor less than five centimeter in diameter, N0, N0, not amenable with surgery for functional or medical comorbidities. And you can see in this slide that using different fractionation schedules, uh, the local control was very good, more than 90% with survival figures uh, that were completely similar to the ones uh, you can get with surgery. So very important results with such a technique. And looking at this huge retrospective series coming from the Netherlands, uh, De Vrij University in Amsterdam, you can see once again that the local control is quite good and the major and most typical pattern of relapse uh, is represented by systemic relapse like in the surgical series. From this point of view, we are trying to get some new predictors of clinical outcome, 
both in terms of local control and in terms of uh, distant metastatic failure. And for example, the PET information you can get in the basal examination in terms of SUV. Can you get you specific information in order to discriminate patients with different clinical outcomes? And uh, of course, uh, we certainly need to improve uh, our biomarkers. You can see in this uh, Stanford experience uh, some important information uh, concerning the probability of uh, freedom from distant metastasis. Uh, once again, in the multivariate analysis, uh, new information like the contact of the tumor with mediastinal pleura, the SUV maximum, and one important issue, tumor size, with larger tumor having a major risk of relapse. Of course, there is an important point represented by the dose-response uh, relationship. You can see in this retrospective multi-institutional Japanese series uh, how important is uh, deliver high doses. You can see this significant cutoff uh, represented by a biological effective dose of more than 100 gray in terms of better outcome. And this is particularly true for larger tumors. Uh, for example, you can see that increasing the biological effective doses above the value of 150 gray, and 150 gray means uh, something similar to 54 gray in three fraction, that is the most typical schedule used in such a scenario. You can see that increasing radiation doses for larger tumor is better. And there is no doubt that uh, comparing stage 1A versus stage 1B is uh, an important clinical predictor of different outcome. This is the most typical radiological pattern you can get with such a technique. You can see the tumor before treatment and a very favorable evolution in the long term with some fibrotic tissue. From this point of view, of course, uh, late radiological findings uh, are quite common. You can distinguish them in different way in terms of a modified conventional pattern, mass-like pattern, and scar-like pattern. These radiological findings are quite common, also in the acute phases. But of course, in spite of this value, you have to be uh, absolutely safe in terms of clinical safety of such a procedure, because from a clinical point of view, the risk of uh, symptomatic pneumonitis is really quite low, less than 3% in terms of uh, clinical, clinically symptomatic pneumonitis, and no particular risk of other kind of toxicity. And so, for all these reasons, efficacy and safety, there is no doubt that ASBRT has to be considered as the non-surgical treatment of choice uh, in the arena of early stage nosmos and lung cancer in patients not amenable with surgery, like reported in many important scientific guidelines. For tumors larger than five centimeters, so T2, B, and 0, M0, or for centrally located tumors, at the moment uh, the evidence is a little bit lower, but of course uh, we learned how to fly in the so-called no-fly zone, represented by these kind of tumors, so tumors located within the two centimeter from the proximal bronchial tree. Simply, we have to modify our schedule using milder fractionated, fractionated schedule. So we started this uh, technique uh, in very fragile patients, represented, with, represented by patients with, sorry, advanced age, fragile in terms of clinical comorbidities and uh, medical situation. And in this fragile population, we got specific information in terms of efficacy and safety, including the known evidence of a pulmonary function test decline caused by the technique. And so, this is also important to remind you that we have no lower limit of PFT, pulmonary function test evaluation, in order to consider this technique uh, um, deliverable or not. For these things, uh, 
there was, in the last decade, a significant diffusion of such a technique in the arena of early stage nosmos and lung cancer, as you can see in this slide considering the last decade. And of course, uh, in a fragile population for which very often we decided to avoid any treatment of to use conventional fractionation, the diffusion of such a technique in this important patient population analysis allowed you to significantly increase the clinical outcome for such patients. So important consideration. And for all these important consideration, we are trying to move around this cycle. We started from the elderly patient and with patients affected with severe COPD. And once again, if we are moving towards the better patients, we are trying to evaluate the performance of such a technique also in the operable patient's population. From this point of view, we can have some information coming from few studies in which normally patients refused the surgical procedure. You can see in this Japanese experience how the clinical outcome for operable patients is uh, really better than the clinical outcome for inoperable patients. It's a quite obvious clinical consideration, of course. But from this point of view, in the world, uh, there were some phase three clinical trials trying to evaluate uh, in a, let's say, methodologically correct approach uh, a direct comparison win to win between surgery and aspirity in operable patients. But unfortunately, all these studies were closed for low accrual. But the absence, or the absence of randomized data does not imply the absence of evidence. And we are trying to use other information coming, for example, from the comparative effectiveness research. There are plenty of studies evaluating, for example, the propensity score matched analysis that simply means uh, to compare in a correct way the same patient with the same patients uh, regardless of the proposal of the treatment. You can see in this uh, American population study the different clinical outcome comparing lobectomy, sublobar recession, ASBRT, conventional radiotherapy and no treatment at all. But when you use such an approach, uh, you can see that the clinical outcome for the same patients receiving lobectomy or SEBOR is exactly the same. And this is the same history in the recent paper published from the Dutch group, comparing once again surgery and VATS lobectomy with similar clinical scenario in terms of a clinical outcome, with simply a trend towards a poorer outcome for SBRT in the long term. And there are some justification at this regard, represented by the lack of nodal decision for patients receiving SEBOR, with the potential contribution of systemic chemotherapy in, uh, for example, P and 2 resected patients. Still, some differences between the two groups in spite of the propensity score matched analysis. Some potential causes are represented by respiratory failure over time, radiation-induced lung injury, because the authors of the previous paper were unable to provide specific cancer-specific survival information. But nevertheless, there is no doubt using this information, propensity score matched analysis, that you can agree on a clinical equipoise comparing SEBOR and surgery comparing the two different approaches in the same patient population, avoiding biases represented by advanced age and other clinical comorbidities. And uh, two weeks ago, or something like that, this paper was published in Lancet of Oncology. And this was an important contribution because uh, I told you before that three different clinical trials, phase three clinical trials, were stopped for low accrual. And the authors uh, and the PI of these trials tried to put together the patients uh, who were randomized in these clinical trials before their closure. And they were able to show at least a similar clinical outcome for patients receiving, in the context of a phase three clinical trial, SEBOR or thoracic surgery without any difference in all different secondary clinical endpoints, and with a better toxicity profile for SBRT 
compared to thoracic surgery. Of course, the number of patients in this uh, analysis anyway was not so important, and so there are for sure methodological flows at this regard, but this was an important information coming from those uh, phase three clinical trials. There is some hope anyway, because there are two new phase three clinical trials trying again to compare in a win-to-win -win strategy surgery versus uh, ASBRT for patients affected with early stage, one coming from the USA and one coming from the UK. And probably this could be very important uh, to discuss this approach uh, for eligible patients uh, by a more neutral party represented by a medical pulmonologist. So how to decide in the clinical arena which could be the most appropriate treatment between surgery and ASBRT for operable patients affected with early stage nosmos and lung cancer? Simply to evaluate pros and cons of the different two therapeutic proposals. You can see, of course, the surgery has many pros, no doubt, definitive pathological diagnosis, uh, nodal staging with the possibility of use chemotherapy or systemic treatment according to this information. Cons, of course, morbidity and mortality, because as you can see here, we have some relatively important rates of mortality for lobectomy, 3-5% in the 30-90 days, even in very expert hands. Sebo, pros and cons. Of course, uh, less invasiveness compared to surgery, very, com very good compliance for the patients, uh, preservation of lung function and quality of life. Uh, cons, uh, these two, treatment without definitive pathological verification in some patients, and post-treatment uh, radiation injury, masking uh, local disease recurrence sometimes. It's certainly true, like our thoracic surgeon friends tell us uh, that in the series published in the literature, there are many patients receiving SEBOR without a pathological confirmation, but simply using the so-called clinical proof of malignancies. And from this point of view, you have to keep in mind uh, that specific models to predict uh, the probability of malignancies using clinical CT, FDG, PET features of a SPN have been developed, and these models have to be validated in every specific single country in order to be sure to treat really a specific cancer. Distinguished fibrosis versus recurrence, of course, new kind of radiological information, telling you that, of course, we, have, we can have a specific radiological predictors of a benign outcome compared to a real recurrence situation. So just to conclude, no doubt that multidisciplinary management with thorough discussion of the advantages and disadvantages of each treatment option should be the gold standard treatment approach for early stage nosmos and lung cancer. And only discussing with every single patient's pros and cons of the two different therapeutic proposals will allow you to offer to every single patient the best treatment choice. So last thing, to remember you that the possibility to deliver systemic treatment to some patients uh, could be an important issue for future clinical research, with of course many issues to be discussed at this regard, and also the possibility to increase the non-invasiveness uh, staging, the non-invasive staging for mediastinum of these patients using such a technique uh, could be a very important issue as well. And finally, thanks again for your kind invitation, and please consider in this opportunity to attend the forthcoming Astro Annual Meeting in my town in less than one year could be very important, and I would be more than happy in hosting you in our country. Thank you very much for your attention.